is located here in Greene County, in Wisconsin. I'm Virgil Lee. Downtown Monroe. Out in the country, whatever, this is right downtown. Here, we're going to go inside and talk to them about that. But in the meantime, we're going to idea where we're at. Don's going to kind of turn around and show you various things as he does that. We've got the uh, Monroe uh, Lumber Company that's over there. Right behind Don is the, uh, oh, over there is the EMS from uh, Greene County. There is a Monroe Fire Department, and we've got the police station right there and off to the left over there. So we're only about a block, block and a half off of our square area. And we'll come all the way back around to the Wisconsin Cheese Group that's located here. We're gonna talk about what kind of cheese they make here, uh, how they got involved for being downtown here in Monroe. So I think it's gonna be a very interesting story that we're gonna do. So let's go inside and meet Dale and uh, Bill. Well, we're inside the Wisconsin Cheese Group now. Dale Lozenegger is with me right now. We're going to go inside a little while into the factory part. We're actually in the break room right now with Bill Holsley. Dale, this place has been here a long time. Can you give us a little history of this plant here? Right. For the, for the, sure, come for, on through. It's the, not a problem. For the, uh, sure. For the best that we've been able to research it, uh, the uh, this facility's been here since the late 20s, okay. early 30s. It was originally built uh, by Kraft. Okay. Uh, That's it, a name that everybody recognizes. Right. And, uh, and they uh, they originally were uh, manufacturing uh, Swiss cheese. Okay. Uh, mostly Swiss cheese in here. Um, the uh, back end of the plant, you can still see the uh, structure, the way that it was built, where they originally brought in canned milk, of course, at okay. that time. And uh, over the years, it's uh, it's kept uh, progressing. But in the uh, in the mid '40s, the uh, facility was sold from uh, Kraft to uh, Milwaukee Cheese. Okay, um, another name that was real common here right, in Monroe. Right, Milwaukee Cheese was uh, in the uh, out of the uh, Waukesha area okay. is where uh, they had a couple other plants. They had several plants around the state, um, and the building was added on to in about the '50s. Um, the uh, the cooler area, uh, so they expanded slightly over over the years. In the uh, late uh, or the mid mid late seventies, early eighties, um, Milwaukee Cheese decided to uh, to sell the the facility off. They uh, it was uh, it sat idle for a, a while. They they weren't okay. able to move it. In uh, nineteen eighty six, uh, Henry Zawicki. Um, bought the property okay. and uh, opened it up as Wisconsin Cheese Group. And we've been operating as Wisconsin Cheese Group ever since. Um, in the uh, in the early years um, of uh, Wisconsin Cheese Group, we were manufacturing mostly uh, semi-soft style cheeses. Munster, Brick, uh, Farmer Cheese, and some of, uh, they had a uh, proprietary uh, uh, pizza cheese that they made for a pizza cheese out of okay. Iowa also. All right. um, I came uh, to the facility in 1991. Um, in uh, 1991, we started uh, we started looking at uh, making uh, Hispanic cheeses. Okay. Over the, over the years since then, we have uh, we've moved from the specialty cheeses of the Munsters and the Bricks to uh, the Hispanic cheeses within this plant. We currently make uh, 98 to 99 percent of what we make here are Hispanic cheese. Um, we uh, we manufacture into bulk forms. Uh, you know, why why the switch? Just out of curiosity. Yeah, that it, uh, was there a big market for that kind well, of thing at that point in time? Yeah, or? as the uh, as the demographics uh, started uh, leaning more towards Hispanics uh, um, immigrating into the Correct. into the United okay. States, there was a there was a need for that product, and not many cheese operations were were working on okay. uh, Hispanic cheeses. So we. Uh, 
had, we, or Henry, uh, who was the owner at that time, had some uh, foresight to uh, see the opportunity uh, in Hispanic cheeses. Semi-soft cheeses uh, were, uh, had become a commodity so that the, uh, the margins were continued to shrink on those type of cheeses. So, okay, so where does your where does your market go? I mean, you you market sell it away from here? Yeah, obviously? we uh, yeah right. We uh, we don't compete very much in Wisconsin. We, okay, uh, that's uh, most of uh, most of our cheese goes to uh, East Coast, Southeast. Uh, um, any big metropolitan area has a fairly large Hispanic uh, population. Okay. So we're uh, we're shipping uh, all over the all over the country, and uh, of course the larger the metropolitan area the larger the the base than then is for the cheese um, Hispanic cheeses uh, by nature or are, uh, are a very bland cheese okay um, which is contrary to what we would typically think we would I, typically think exactly of hot I would think and the spicy. opposite correct right hot and spicy but uh, it, actually it's the opposite they're very bland um, the uh, the fresh cheeses which we make uh, uh, queso blanco queso fresco Okay. Um, both of those cheeses are uh, have a, just a, a milky, uh, milky, salty flavor. Okay. Is the only flavor, and they're used, they're used uh, in all dishes, um, oh and, and they're just okay. they uh, they blend well with everything. Sure. And then Hispanics typically then if they want hot and spicy, which which is typically thought of, they add the they peppers add the, and okay. the, the chilies and that type of stuff to it. And this, uh, the queso blanco and queso fresco, both uh, accept uh, other flavors okay. quite easily because yeah. of their uh, pleasant okay. uh, pleasant taste. When you came in 91, I thought you said, right? Yes. What was your role then, Dale? I, uh, I came in as the, I was the plant manager. Um, our, uh, our little plant here at that time, um, we had uh, 11, I made the 11th employee. Um, and we we did everything from this facility. We uh, we brought milk in. We made cheese. Uh, we took the orders. We did the accounting. Okay. We shipped from here. Okay. Um, we've now now grown to uh, um, where we're uh, we've got uh, over 175 employees in Wisconsin with Wisconsin Cheese Group. This is the manufacturing facility. We right. have, we also have the uh, packaging right. and, and distribution. You're located in, on the the north right. side of Monroe. Yes. So yeah, on what, the other side what is that facility used for then? That is, uh, we're, doing, uh, we're doing all the packaging there. We, uh, okay. We're just bulk manufacturing here. We ship it across town, and then uh, it gets cut and packaged into uh, sizes from uh, 8 ounces up to uh, 5 pounds. Then you must sell to a number of different companies that have their different brands, or how do you yeah, how we, that uh, we do uh, we do a, a number of uh, private label companies okay. also that uh, we manufacture specifically for them right. under their uh, their requirements, and then we also have uh, our uh, label, uh, the uh, El Via Herald, okay. uh, is a Hispanic uh, label that we uh, sell on sell and market under. So you've also. got your own label plus you do other labels. Right, okay. right. So it's kind of a lot a, of people don't understand that when they walk right. into a store, they'll see all these labels and they think, well, all of these make their own cheese. They don't no, all do no, that. No, that's that's typically not done and. And uh, you know, you asked earlier how we uh, how we kind of uh, moved into the Hispanic, and right. and part of it was the uh, the nature of the cheese business in the uh, in the nineties, okay. um, where the uh, there were all kinds of cheese manufacturing plants in the seventies and eighties in Wisconsin. Right. But as as the uh, the economy of the dairy industry changed, um, they started consolidating into bigger and bigger plants. Right. As they became bigger plants, they found that they that they had a, an advantage if they stayed specific to one style of cheese, and you know that really was the growth of our specialty cheese business. Uh, in it Wisconsin. is why Green County has been so successful. We're, right. I mean, we had at one time they figured somewhere over. 300 factories, not all operating at the same time, down to 13 basically in Green right. County right now. Yep. So that's the reason why. Yes, and it's uh, and each one of them, each one of those factories, uh, yeah, there's two or three of them that you know that uh, specialize right. in the Munster and Brick right. yet, but otherwise, uh, you know, each of the factories have kind of found their own little niche, 
and that that has been the case through throughout most of Wisconsin. We uh, we as a company we uh, we ma we only manufacture about uh, fifty percent of what we actually sell. We also procure cheese from many of our friends in in uh, southern Wisconsin here too that make cheese. We oh, okay. and, and and throughout other parts of Wisconsin we we buy product from thirty other cheese plants in Wisconsin. Okay, so if you go and you go to the north side of the town and you see your big area there. Yeah, that's why that's, <laughs> that's, why, why, that's why we need you're a You're not producing all of that. Right. Okay. Right. Well, yeah. that's really interesting. Yeah. I didn't realize yeah. that at all. Um, this plant here is uh, we've we've grown this to uh, where we're uh, processing about 600,000 pounds of milk a day. Um, which uh, keeps us running 24-7, uh, uh, where there's activity here seven days a week. and uh, So uh, you're producing somewhere around 60,000 pounds of cheese a day? Yeah, a little better than that, yeah. With okay, because we yep. figured that 10 to 1 ratio, right, we've been right. talking that all yes. along with all the yeah, factories. Yep. Oh my gosh, um, I had no idea that that was that this big here. That's the that's the other part of uh, what we like about the Hispanic cheeses and the fresh Hispanic cheeses is we can get a little better than that 10 to 1 ratio. You can, okay, yeah. I was so, wondering about that. There so is, yeah, there is a difference when yeah. you talk, start talking to people, okay. Yep. Yeah, so uh, that was one of the things that, uh, you know, that's been favorable for us is that we get the added... Uh, a little bit of added yield. Um, the downside of that is is that it it's a uh, needs to be uh, consumed uh, fresh. Okay. Um, and so even with an extended shelf life um, is only 90 days. So the uh, to, in order to maintain that fresh flavor uh, that that's appreciated by the Hispanics, um, it needs to be consumed pretty fresh. The logical question comes: 600,000 pounds of milk. Yeah. You're downtown Monroe. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> you yeah. don't have a lot of yeah. farms. Well, where, where do you get your milk? Well, we're uh, um, surprisingly we're we're getting most of that milk within a hundred mile radius. Is that right? Yeah. It's uh, most of it's uh, coming right from you know a lot of it from green. County, but uh, the the adjoining counties also. Um, that uh, yeah, most of it's within the hundred mile radius. Once in a while, um, during uh, you know when milk supplies shrink a little okay. bit or whatever, we may have to we may have to ship something in from a couple hundred miles away. But well, it's not uncommon to be driving down here and having to wait for one of the absolutely walk trucks to back in, and that's just that's, yeah, that, that's uh, just part of Monroe. We right. just know that that's there. That uh, the you know if you've got the other factor of that uh, all right. 600,000 pounds of process or processing 600,000 a day right. that's uh, only 50,000 pounds fit on a semi so we've got 10 to 11 we've got 10 to 11 trucks backing in right then when you then you still have to deal with the way the byproduct of the cheese making process um, and you, where does you, that go Dale well we're uh, we're shipping most of that uh, to a pro an, to be further processed in Fond du Lac okay uh, to another processor we uh, we do go through a process here called uh, uh, an RO system reverse osmosis okay where we're taking out uh, two-thirds of the water uh, and concentrating the way so then that's yeah, less so trucks. you're not so, having yeah. correct right that would make a huge difference yeah otherwise uh, we'd be we'd have to ship uh, approximately eight you know if we brought in 10, 10 mm -hmm. semi loads of milk we'd have to ship back out uh, um, eight eight semi loads of yeah. way and two trucks loads of cheese out the back door so the the plant uh, things come in and they go back out uh, all in the same day well you're somewhat landlocked here absolutely I mean, are you yeah. talking about trying to expand somehow I mean yeah we've uh, but, we're uh, we're talking about different uh, different options okay. um, and at this point we don't we don't know how them are going to play out but yeah, uh, yeah we are uh, we are reaching our capacity I was just uh, gonna say you're, you're and, pushing uh, it I would think and it uh, you know we've uh, we've went through many different uh, um, upscales over the okay. years okay. To, to reach the level we're at. Sure. So with uh, you know better equipment.
equipment, um, um, faster, faster pumps. Okay. Uh, you know, the whole cheese okay. making process can okay. be speeded up. Yeah, some to so a certain. It's point. really changed over the years, hasn't um, it? From people, you know, we, we have the National Historic Cheese Making Center, and we make the cheese out there, and they will count sure. the kettle. Yeah. You know, and people come in to see that, and it's fun, but it's so different now. Yeah. In terms yeah. of what you can do. And yeah, I, I remember uh, when I first started out. I my first job was for John Marty at the Wheel of Swiss Chateau. Okay. And uh, that, uh, you know, I still remember the first experience of, uh, of uh, dipping a, uh, a vat or a, uh, a kettle of uh, Swiss cheese. And, uh, and, I, and I, as I said, I do remember the experience in that when I, when I dipped the first one, I pushed the curd, and I got yelled at by the cheesemaker <laughs> for doing that because... Uh, so your history goes a little bit before this factory. Yes. You actually yep. worked in the factory as a cheesemaker. Yeah, I've been uh, since uh, 1979. Um, I've been in, in cheese plants. Uh, Wheel of Swiss Chateau. Uh, I spent five years at uh, Silver Lewis Cheese up by Monticello. We, we've already interviewed Josh, Josh and Carly yep. Erickson up there. Um, so. I worked for uh, Bob Gamer back at the okay. time. That time was the the, the cheesemaker there. Sure. And then uh, I spent a little time with uh, Avonmore. Um, and uh, even uh, Dorman's. I had a stint at Dorman's. So, so let I, me ask you this. There's a lot of work in all this. Why the cheese industry for you? Why why the love that you apparently yeah, have for this? Yeah, I, uh, um, I, I enjoy the process. Okay. Uh, I, I grew up on a dairy farm, so I understand uh, I understand where that milk comes from and, uh, and how you get it. And... Uh, and I and I enjoy the 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 uh, the fact that you uh, make something right every day right. and that it's a it's and what a, is your role right now, Dale? I'm the vice president of operations. Okay. Um, and uh, most people say I don't do anything. So, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> you're talking but to I, an ex administrator. That's right. So. Yeah, yeah. We, and Don's an ex administrator. Right. So, but. Uh, um, like I say, we've we've grown to the to a point where we're at uh, um, we're going to hit about 90 million in sales this year. Oh my gosh! Um, and uh, you know, most all that product gets shipped out of the Monroe the Monroe uh, uh, plant at Third Street, and 50 percent of it comes from from this well, here here when plant. When you start so. talking about all of this, and you know, think about the dairy farms. Obviously, they they keep producing milk for you, and so yeah. that's jobs for there. Okay, yep. and then I think of the jobs that you guys have with all the people between this plant and your north side, call it plant. That's there. That's that's amazing. Yeah, the, the, yep. how, I think how it, that adds to the economony here um, in Monroe and Green County. And uh, we've uh, we've been very fortunate with uh, um, you know being in Green County, where uh, the uh, the concept of making cheese is an accepted practice. Right. Um, I've uh, I've I deal with. With some other or a lot of other plants, and they have they have a lot of logistical problems, uh, you know, within city limits and things like that, dealing with the wastewater and all of those things. So we're uh, we're very blessed to, to be in this community where yeah. where that. Uh, and of course, then we have our cheese days. That's right. Celebration yep. of cheese yes. that's coming yeah. up next year. And I don't know that I talked to you about this before, Dale, but one of the things that we want to do at our opening ceremony this year is have every uh, cheese factory be represented. Rep hmm. represented in okay. the opening ceremony to come in with their one or two signature cheeses and have each one of those plants introduced to show people sure. just how important that is. Okay. To yeah, sounds like a great, so, great idea. Okay. Yeah. I think we can go inside now. Okay. We're have yeah, and I'll, uh, I'll kind of turn this over okay. to Bill. Like I said, one of the uh, one of the other things that we've been very fortunate to, in Greene County is that you have a vast amount of experience yeah. in in cheese in the cheese making. Um, I think we have uh, we have nine licensed cheesemakers on staff, and 
and right here know, at your own plant. right here in our own yeah. plant. Um, you know, Bill has uh, Bill. You're probably uh, encroaching on uh, 35, 40 years of experience now. <laughs> License, yeah. Oh, wow. And uh, and you know, myself. You know, I've got uh, you know, I've got I've got over 30 years experience, and we've got several others that. Uh, that See, have, now I think that's another misconception. People think there's a factory, there's one cheesemaker. Sure. No, no, no. Yeah. And all the others are workers. No, these. Right. Uh, we yeah. got all these cheesemakers. Yeah. If you and, went out to the fair last week. And you looked in, here was a factory, but they might have had two or three all these different, all entries. different sure. people from cheesemakers yeah. from those plants. So yep. it's pretty interesting. Yep. And, uh, you know, we uh, were, again, we're for fortunate to uh, to have Green County milk yep. as part of our supply. Because yep. uh, yep. um, I, uh, I, we, uh, we also do some work with a uh, plant in California. And, you know, California just, they cannot produce the same flavor qualities that we have. Yeah. And I think, you know, it, it all comes back to yeah. good quality uh, uh, southern Wisconsin yep. milk. Yep. Dale, thank, thank you thank so you very much. much for doing this. Don, I think we'll stop there. We'll go inside with Bill Holsley, and we'll actually see what they're doing in there here at the uh, Wisconsin Cheese Group. We're inside the plant right now, and what Bill's doing is washing his hands. Is that a very common practice that every time you come in, Bill, to do yes, that? Yes, every one, every time. Yes. Every one, every time. And the purpose of that is that's a policy of the company, a rule, or? Well, uh, Hispanic cheese, you've got to be very careful um, with bacteria growth. Okay. So, so it's extra critical in Hispanic cheese. It's critical with all cheeses. Uh, but more so because of the pH of our cheese. It's very susceptible for growth of bacteria. Um, also, uh, Wisconsin Cheese Group is SQF certified, safe quality foods. Okay. Uh, it's, a, it's a new uh, national uh, standard. All right. uh, a lot of uh, the people that buy our cheese want you to be certified. Um, we have an outside company that comes in, certifies us. Um, they check us every year. Uh, it's from one end to the other. It's very, very detailed, very precise, but uh, it's just, again, for safe food, uh, for selling to the public. That goes back to what Dale was talking about, that you guys produce a lot of cheese, and it's, and it's actually sold to other companies. Sure. So that goes back to that. Yep. Bill, why don't you give us a little history of yourself first before we go in here. You've been involved with cheese making for a long time. Uh, yeah. I actually grew up on a dairy farm west of New Glarus. Um, my, I guess my interest in cheese making, my uh, great-grandfather was Rudolf Bankert, okay. one of the first cheese makers in Greene County. Um, uh, when I was in high school, I worked part-time at some cheese factories when their hired men would go on vacation. Okay. Uh, I got out of high school, it was the Vietnam War, it was the lottery, didn't really know what was going to happen. Sure. Um, so I got a job working for Albert Deppler, ah, which is boy, that name goes pretty, pretty common in Green County. Of, a lot uh, of factories yeah. you know, too. If, if you were from Green County and haven't worked for Albert Deppler, there's something <laughs> wrong with you. So, uh, then from there, uh, I went back to the home farm for a little while, and then I uh, went to Madison, and I, I got a job at the, in the food science department at the University of Wisconsin. Um, working in Babcock Hall. Right. Um, at that plant, they make everything that you can make out of cheese, or out of milk, excuse me. So it's very interesting. Yeah, I got, yeah. I got quite an education there. After 20 years of that, um, I was hired by John Yagi at the Center for Dairy Research. John is a, is a Green County boy, a cheese maker, cheese family. John and I interviewed Gary, uh, Gary Grossman, and we interviewed John yep. up there. So. So uh, I worked for John for 10 years doing research work, and uh, I was doing research work for Wisconsin Cheese Group one day, and Dale was asking me my future plans, and I said, well, I'm close to retirement here, and <laughs> this is when Dale and Wisconsin Cheese Group were growing and expanding, and he said, well, we've got a job for you now if you're interested. Wow. So I came down and interviewed, and uh, I've been here now for eight years. And uh, during that time, watching it grow and expand, and it's really been incredible to watch a plant that started with everything in this building to what we are doing today. So, so we're inside.
outside right now. You want to explain some of the things that sure. we see here? And um, behind me, we've got our double O vats. Uh, they each we put about 34,000 pounds of milk in each one. Okay. And uh, again, as Gail said, we're running around the clock. Um, by the time we're done in uh, late afternoon, early evening, uh, it's time for cleanup, and then we start right back in again. And uh, we're doing six days a week now. Uh, late Saturdays and Sundays is when we try to do any uh, work that we need done, stainless steel work, addition work, floor work, painting, anything that needs to be done, we have to fit in during that time. So, uh, pretty intense work schedule. Uh, how many people actually work directly here? I know Dale was talking about the total number that oh. worked here in Wisconsin City. I think we must have um, between 50 and 60 that work right here. people that work right here. Yeah. Wow. What did you say, nine cheese makers? Uh, total. They didn't, we're not, they're not all right here. Some are at our, at our Third Street facility, but okay. we've got that North many people. The, okay. the majority are here. Okay. I think, by, what were you making in here this morning when we walked in? Um, Can we go and take a look at now? So we'll go over sure. there. And John will move us. What is happening right here, Dale? Uh, 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 no. After after we make the cheese and the double O's, we pump it over to the drain tables. Okay. These are kind of a standard drain table, um, but it works very good for our Hispanic setup. We'll uh, pump the third the way over here, put the agitators in, uh, get all the way off, then we'll uh, salt the curd, and then from there, um, at the end, you can see we, we put it into blocks. We, it's a system we designed ourselves. Is that what they're doing back there right now? Uh, they're just setting up for it. Okay. Uh, it's a 240 pound form, and we put nine of them on a pallet. It's all stainless steel. Okay. Um, then we press that, that whole pallet. Then when it's cooled down, we take it over to Third Street, and from there, we've got it all automated, and we can push that 240 pounds of cheese out. Some of it gets cut into square forms, some of it gets re-ground into round pieces. That would be our queso fresco. Uh, again, we talk about the people we employ here. That machinery over there was all made by Faith uh, Equipment. Oh, really? So, again, okay, wonderful. Same as in all of Green County. We've got a lot of wonderful fabricators in the area. Yeah. Stainless steel people. Uh, we've got everything right here in Green County. So the economy spreads out just for the people out. that are working here. We're yep. talking other businesses that are able to keep up yep. with us right there. That's why uh, dairy business is so important to Wisconsin. The amount of money we can generate. Oh, absolutely. Incredible. No question. From the farming, it just keeps on expanding right. from there. Where else should we probably go to take a look at? What, what, what next should we look uh, at? We can go back around to the other spot and we can take a Does look at the drying room. John, and why don't we stop up here and we'll go over there and then we'll start over there. Does that make sense? Okay. Where are we at right now? Because it's a little cooler in here. <laughs> it's a little cooler in here. We're in the brine room. Um, a lot of the cheeses we make um, are brine cheeses. Fresh brined, uh, th these that we're looking at here are panelas. Okay. Um, it's, it's used as a fresh cheese, uh, very good uh, cut, sliced, uh, used on salads. Oh, gotcha. Very flavorful. Right. It, it has a, a fresh, clean dairy flavor. Um, again, it's, it's high pH, there's no acidity in it, uh, very little cheese culture in it. Um, but uh, you get a very unique flavor. Not what you're used to with your European background right. cheeses. Right. But uh, it's a Hispanic type and, and uh, a very good product. Now, how long will it stay in this brine? Uh, these little guys only stay in about uh, 30 or 40 minutes. Oh, really? So they get in and out oh, pretty quick. Oh, very different than you think of some of the other cheeses. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Yep. Well, so there's a lot of hand labor that goes with yeah. it at that point yeah. in time, Bill? It, yeah. We've, we keep trying to take as much out as we can. Uh, we, we've developed a machine that we can uh, get some of the hand labor out okay. and filling these. Sure. But we still have turning and, okay. and getting them out okay. of the form. So. And now you've got a machine in this next bill, or next room that I think we'd like to go into. Why don't you explain yeah. what it is and then we can go in there and take a picture of it. Well, this, this goes back to uh, 
where you read quite a bit that way used to be a byproduct and you had to figure out a way to get rid of it. Correct. Well, now we found I out. I fed it to the pigs. Well, well yeah, or lamb spread. Right. Um, we found out now that there are so many um, uses for whey that there's so much in whey okay. that we have to get it out of the whey. So what we're doing is, uh, it's called reverse osmosis. Use high pressure pumps, send the whey through a membrane, and it'll take the water out of the whey. Uh, now in the case again where Dale said, if we had to ship this whey out of here, we'd have all kinds of semis. But we reduce that amount by two thirds. So it cuts down on your trucking cost, and once it gets to the company that's gonna dry it, it's easier for them and it's okay. ready to go. Okay. Um, so where does the water go? Well, the water is clean. Uh, some of the water we use in our uh, CIP system. Okay. It, it's so clean, it, it's, uh, it's clean enough that you can use it for that type of thing. Um, it, it's, it's called polished after it's taken out of the milk and it's polished to get any uh, other out of it, so all you're left with is water. Um, the federal government was looking at a way that you could actually use that as a food ingredient. Like if you were making a drink, you could actually use that water to go back in, which there again would save you a lot of money on adding water oh, to, a, to a drink you were making. Right. Right. So all of that's coming and it's getting worked with all the time. Well, uh, things are really moving like changing. you can't believe. Yeah. Uh, How do you keep up with all that, Bill? Just out well, of curiosity. There again, a, a lot of it comes from uh, places like the Center for Dairy Research. Uh, and they're but, expanding up there from what I understand, correct? Babcock Hall's got a program in uh, where they're going to start expanding. Uh, money has come from industry. Uh, once industry brings enough money in, the state's going to match it. Um, there again, it gives every plant in Wisconsin, and actually they do testing for anybody in the world, it gives you a facility to go to. When we want to do something, test a, a new cheese out, we can't take the gamble of 34,000 pounds. So you make an appointment to go to the Center for Dairy Research, you use a 600 pound vat. Okay. And then if you want to compare different styles of the make, they've got like six vats there. So you can use all the identical milk, and do your testing. So we've got that facility at our fingertips. And you uh, think how important that is to uh, our cheese industry. Exactly, My God. exactly. A lot of cheeses have started there. Companies have started there. Uh, in our case, we've expanded from there. Now, the reverse osmosis machine, where does something like that come from? Uh, there are several companies in the U.S. that make them. Oh, really? Um, okay. This is reverse osmosis. You've also got ultrafiltration. Uh, when I first heard about that, <laughs> okay. it was used on farms down in Arizona. They were shipping their milk all over. Well, they could take the water out of the milk before they shipped it. Again, instead of hauling water all over the U.S., take that out. Then you could use that to like standardize your, your milk. Oh, my. Uh, yeah. That's just huge. A lot of things going on. Can we get, take a picture take, of that yeah. in there? It's a little noisy. We'll, but if you we'll want let Don kind of swing around as we go in and... We can see what it looks like. Oh yeah. Oh my God. And that is noisy. Wow. Well, that's incredible. That's just um, that amazing. Thing that you can Those are the high pressure pumps and these long tubes. Those are the membranes that the way it's okay. pushed through. And this is the polisher that takes any of the, the final, final. Yeah. How long did this been in operation? Um, we maybe had it a couple years now. Okay. So it's relatively new for you guys. Yep. Great. Well, so we go back out here then and John can follow us. Is there any other area, Bill, you want to show us? Or is that pretty much what we've got in here? That, that's pretty much it, okay. yeah. Okay. 
Okay. Unless, uh, I don't know how long it'll be till they fill those forms again. It, yeah. okay. it, it might be a while, so, okay. since they were yeah, just okay. pumping over. Well, Bill, this has been really fascinating. First of all, talking to Dale and now to you. Uh, I had no idea that this, yep, you could go right ahead. That's just what you guys need to do. One of the things we've always prided ourselves in when we want to do the interviews is going and actually show what goes on. We're not mm -hmm. going to stop the work. Well, we're doing that. So. Well, we're happy that the uh, Historic Cheese Making Center is doing this because there's so much history in Greene oh. County. A lot of it we've lost already, or you have to go back and, and dig in old newspapers to find. Um, so, so what you're doing now is really valuable. Well, uh, when they came to John and myself, we said, you know what? We lose this, yep. it's gone. Yep. You know, and you start talking about the names, like you mentioned, Deppler. Yep. Oh my gosh. Sure. There's not a factory in this county that yep. hasn't had some kind of relationship. Oh, just quickly, what are they doing? Oh, they're taking it out yep. now. Just like we had just talked yep. about. Yep. Time now to take that out. So. And then where does that go? Um, from here, then, we'll cover them okay. in plastic and then ship them over to uh, that third, goes third, to street. third Street. Yep. Plant. Okay. And then from there, they'll get cryovac and oh. cased and. Very fascinating. Bill, thank you thank so you. much. Thank this you is, very this much. This has been really great. You know, I've driven by this plant all my life, <laughs> and I had no idea yep. how involved this was, how big this has become. So that's it from the Wisconsin Cheese Group.